Hello all, I'm doing a quick pop-up, living figuratively, on my front triennial slash can tri, I'm sorry, front international can triennial Cleveland tour today, which I'm just out of the house, so I'm gonna, I came down here to Playhouse Square to um, pop into the Bonfoy Gallery, where they are having um, some of the can triennial things, which uh, is with the theme, You Are Here. And I was thrilled and surprised, you know, you were on Living Figuratively here. I was thrilled and surprised to see that it was all figurative art. This particular uh, portion of Can Triennial was curated by Darius Stewart, who is a fabulous figurative artist who has works in the, um, the MoCA and all over other places too. Um, so I'm gonna flip the camera around so that you guys can see the art. And I'm just gonna give you a quick walkthrough here. All right, we, here, this is the whole, the whole gallery, and we're gonna start right here with Augustus Bordeloy, Bordelois, I'm pronouncing it badly. Um, so the You Are Here theme, okay, that's one of the, I'm gonna talk from the perspective of somebody who entered this show and was not accepted. The You Are Here theme, what they asked you to do was to, show them works that you've done, and then um, do a proposal for works that you will do that have the You Are Here theme. Now, the You Are Here theme is quite a broad one because, you know, it's kind of like you could really shoehorn anything into You Are Here. One of the things, the commonality that I'm seeing in this show, maybe, is that it looks like contemporary people, people of today that exist today. Um, so I'm not sure it would be good if on each one of these works, they actually wrote, showed you the proposal and what the, what the artist was thinking when they, um, here, I'm going to give you artists credits here, right here, because these are, these are beautiful works right here. These are Lee Brooklyn's works, two paintings, um, very, you know, contemporary contemporary people. Um, these ones right here are Julie Friedman's. And it's interesting because they are not figurative, but they are spaces where you might actually be. So here she's got, you know, the penguins and the cobras. And this one, she's got the zebras, which to me, this actually does speak to the you are here because you know, there's odd creatures that are in these spaces. Now, David King's work is also here in the You Are Here section. And David King, you may remember him from a while ago. I did a living figuratively when he had a show at, um, at Bay Arts. And um, it was all about, it was, I think it was called Time Travel, um, where he references a lot of things from his childhood and his memory with sort of bold colors and maybe quirky situations, which seems like maybe he's drawing the similar inspiration here. And uh, every time I use the word here, I'm kind of convincing myself that these are all on the theme of you are here. Now these ones are very different. They are not you are here, or they didn't seem to be you are here in Cleveland by Gary Williams, um, but I don't know. Perhaps these are here in Cleveland. And I don't know whether you are here has to be Cleveland themed. Um, maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. This one, I was amazed, and I'm gonna be all goo goo gaga and say, I was amazed this was a painting, not a photograph, by Maximilian Peralta, but it has a very, very cool quirkiness to it. And it makes me, it reminds me also of, there's something at the Gallery Plus, I believe, um, where there's another one of his works. I saw an ad for that in the Can Journal. And then here we have Theodis Regans, whose work you saw at the, um, when I was at the showing with Liz Moggins' show at the uh, yards, he is a 
super amazingly good artist, and he is, I believe, just starting art school like this weekend because he was admitted to CIA. Uh, he went to the Cleveland School of Arts, but look what a fabulous painter. He's a fabulous painter and he's young, um, you know, just starting art school. So let's hope that CIA does positive things for him because I'm, you know, just gonna be truthful here a little bit. Um, CIA, when I went and also right now, they're not super in love with realism and they do try to beat it out of you a little bit. But if you're really good, they might let you stick with it. These ones I think are stunners. It is Suzanne Head, Bunny Parts from Chinatown. And just what a fun, quirky, kitschy kind of just cool coolness to it. And these are also in the theme of You Are Here, Secret Spot. Of course, Secret Spot, You Are Here. All right. Then I believe we've got one more in the You Are Here, which is Michael McCullough's Landscape Mandela. And so this one, it's a landscape, but a glasscape. It's really, really pretty amazing. And because I didn't show you too much about Augustus's work over here, I'm gonna finish with this one, Ribbons and Pearls. And this one, the you are here aspect of it, it's got a classic 1920s look to it. It's luncheon on the grass, it's quirky things, and um, really a very amazing figurative work. All right, I'm gonna flip, flip around again. And this is only the first stop. Uh, the second stop, I'm gonna walk down the street to the Cleveland State Galleries, which also have um, some can triennial works in them. And um, at the end of that show, you will see the ones that I entered and that were rejected from the show. So, uh, and maybe you can guess why. All right, um, see you in a bit. So I am here again now at a different spot down the street at the Cleveland State Galleries. Um, they're both on Euclid, so you park in one place and you can hit both, both venues. The Cleveland State Galleries are open at 12 and Bonfoy Gallery, I believe, was open at 10. So, you know, you can make a day of it. And because I'm at Cannes Triennial, one of the things I picked up was this book right here, which gives you all the different can triennial locations. So be sure to grab one of these if you see it. Um, so I'm gonna take you on a walkthrough of the Cleveland State Gallery's version of You Are Here. All of it. Here we go, for living figuratively. There's less figurative work here, but it's more confrontational. So let's just, let's just see. All right, so Cleveland State Galleries. I'm gonna start right here, just so you know, this is the sign, the you are here sign right here. We're gonna start with Kristen Klippel's amazing, adorable, I hate to call art adorable, but this really, she just, I think that's, the word adorable is, is quite a good, quite a good one. It's a compliment in my book. And it's just very, very, very cool. And it's all ceramic. Like each one of these little floral, creations that she made is a little ceramic fired ceramic piece and because this is a birdhouse you know it definitely speaks to the you are here it's called casting a long shadow cool very cool then we have kasuma kasumi i'm sorry kasumi's this is a the okay it's a lenticular print, which is something I've never heard of, but you, you move around, it's not a video, you move around and things change, and it's very, very cool. Right here, I'm gonna read you Darius Stewart's juror statement, because he was the one that, or curator statement, um, because he was the one that curated the pieces to go into this show based on all the pieces that were accepted to Can Triennial. 
And um, he's asked himself what it means to be here right now at present in this moment and aware of how important this space is to what I'm occupying. While selecting the artists, these questions dominated my mind. I constantly search for artists investigating the time time in space we inhabit. These artists are all connected by their need to examine our current society and where they stand in it. One of the things that you'll notice about the Cleveland State show that was also curated by um, Darius Stewart in comparison to the Bonfoy show is this one is a little bit more in your face, a little bit more political, a little bit more edgy. And perhaps that's because it's an institution of higher learning as opposed to a gallery. Um, Bonfoy is, is a, uh, a highly respected gallery in, you know, they've been around, I don't know, like a hundred years or something. Um, and some of the artists are here and there as well. But, um, but this show has a little bit more of an edge to it. Here's a Augustus Bordelai. And this one is Northern Daydream. Oh, then we have these little beauties by Aja Joy Grant, Bold Fantasy. And these are little silkscreen prints. Oh, you know what, before, ah, well, I'll go down this, this hall. And then right here, we have this little amazing bundle. It's Shani Richards Afro-American number two. And this is a very cool assemblage but it's a broom but it's hair that's a interesting interesting dichotomy so right here david camber ross and it is neural network landscapes and then we have this fun thing where i'm being taped taping it and it's not even called taping anymore but I'm from that generation so I'm taping and then we have another one of the artists that we saw fabulous fabulous figurative artist Lee Brooklyn who I have to find Lee Brooklyn I have to find more stuff about Lee about them I do not know whether whether I've never seen or met Lee but their work is quite, quite amazing. And I love this figurative work. I think this one is my favorite piece in the show right here. It's called um, Pieta, which for those of you who are unfamiliar, I don't know if you remember the Michelangelo's Pieta where it's Mary holding the dead body of Jesus. Um, this painting right here, it, the model for it is uh, Stina Alia, who is also an amazing figurative artist from the area. Um, and she is, I believe, holding her son who just started, I don't know, fifth grade or something today. Um, but it's a really poignant, poignant, beautiful statement on the world and on society and, and everything. So I love it. Um, and then here we have Sarah Curry who, I have covered her show when it was at the Hedge Gallery, and she does these amazing black velvet on black um, uh, paintings of girls doing selfies without the selfies, without the uh, actual iPhone in the in the picture, but just their the looks that they make and and everything. So like they are supremely fun and definitely here. Then we have another one right here. This one is by Sydney K. It's like a um, digital inkjet print where it started as a photograph with, but then a lot of other things happened to it. Then we have another Augustus Bordeloy. This one right here is, where are all the young men gone? And so this one also, it has a classic feel to it from the maybe the 1800s, but you know, with his particular type of stylized figures. 
Okay, this one right here is very up to the minute. Always, always by Micah Kraus. It's glass, I think they're glass, probably plexiglass, tombstone, and they've got very telling words. words. The world is not my home. Home is where my heart is. And then we've got the classic wedding poem, love is, what, love is, it does not, you know, it doesn't, it is not proud, it is not, I can't even read a lot of these words that are, that are crossed out, but it makes a very bold statement about what love is and isn't and should be. As a dog returns to its vomit, so fools repeat their folly. That one is very pertinent for today. This world is not my home, is where my heart is. And this is, yeah, is this the same as the other one or is there something different? Anyway, you have to come see it. I'm not gonna do my examining here. All right, I'm gonna walk down this beautiful long hallway through the art and where we get to see Lee Brooklyn's Pieta again, which is my favorite piece in the show. Um, and you might just remember that it's Michelangelo's Pieta and remember that for a little bit later in the show. I'm going to just drop a hint. This piece right here is Amy Lee's The Walls Are No Defense. And this one has a really profound irony to it because it's a brick brick wall falling apart the opposite way downward um, it's hanging from the ceiling but you know what these are not bricks they're light as anything they're made out of tissue paper they're little folded tissue paper pieces i'm not going to touch them but i know i can tell they're light because look they're held on by these little skinny threads and i think this packs a a major, major wallop of a statement. And even the shadows on the floor are kind of amazing that it makes. It, there's a, a light here, which maybe is part of it. Or no, you know what, the lights are up there. Um, but it, oh, duh, look at this. The backs are empty. That, yeah, this is, this is an amazing piece. Really, really amazing and a good statement. Now, here we have another politically charged piece. Let's see, I'm gonna find out who it's by. Rebecca Ann Wilhelm, Reflection on Separation. This is all about the children being separated from their parents at the border. And there's a mirror there where we can picture ourselves in situations like that where there is a fence between us and the child we love most in the whole entire world and that we have traveled across all kinds of dangerous places to get them to safety and then what is our reward being separated from them maybe never to see them again um so that's this one is a very very powerful statement and standing within it is something powerful I, that hopefully my video gives a little bit of that feeling, but really you should come here and stand within it. Um, we're gonna keep going here to the second room. This is a very nice big gallery at Cleveland State. These are Sarah Cabot's New York Times, July 19th, 2020. Now, if this was a planned show instead of a pop-up one, I would certainly go home and Google July 19th, 2020 and find out what happened on that day. Um, right now there's, and the, there's all kinds of little, I mean, I'm sure it was like COVID, COVID related because that's what we were dealing with back then. Uh, but you know, all kinds of other stuff was happening in the world too. So I'm going to go home and Google that day. Okay. Then we have things like this, Nolan Myers, sus with a question mark. I don't know what sus means. Maybe somebody who is young knows what that means. Um, this is a very well done, uh, fun thing. I want a perfect body. I want a perfect soul from 
a song that this old person can't remember but does remember singing it. You're so, yeah, 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 you're special, da, 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 special. But I'm a freak, and I can't remember now who, who did that song. But maybe you're, you know, you'll remember it from my wonderful musical rendition of it. Um, then, here we go. This is another amazing figurative one. Maximilian Peralta, who had the one with the tennis shoe at the uh, other gallery. And this one has a, well, it looks like he's stealing something. Um, or maybe he's playing a video game stealing something. But it's a gorgeous, realistic, realistic piece that makes you think. Here's Nolan Myers' Pattern Seeking. And some of these, there's quite a bit going on here. This one is Nolan Myers' Altar for Being Scared of Monsters. So there's a lot to unpack with these ones. These, I think, need to be sat with for a while. And, you know, like see what you can, see what you can think about them. See how they fit into the you are here theme. This one is Mike Myers' corporeal punishment, not corporal, corporeal. Um, it's got a very cool multi effect to it. And I love those colors. Those are my colors. All right, then we have this amazing, yeah, these, uh, oh, is that me? <gasps> Oh, that's, that's, it's little mirrors, which is why, ah, which is why I saw it look at me because I think it was my reflection. There we go. See there? That's what it is. So this one is Connor Goodwin's Space Cadets and Crystal Moon Rock and Rock Hammer. I believe this piece is partnered with this one right here, the whole moon rock thing. And oh, 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 and look at the moon shoes. I remember those from when my children were little. That was one of those things we bought that was used exactly once and then kept for the next 13 years and then finally given away. Uh, Mike Meyer, Time Cop. So here's another just very fantastical, fantastical piece. And now here we have something that looks a little bit mythological and has the distinction of being, I believe, the only nude in the show. Um, Amani Williams, something he can't give me or the baptism of an unsuspecting newcomer. And I don't know the story behind it, but it's very cool, beautifully drawn. All right, let's come around the corner. So then here we have Elizabeth Lax, spaced out, not here. So this is st on the statement, you are here, but not here. And then we've got Elizabeth Lax, contorted void. And this is a, a band, an alternate view of a band. David King, A Soldier's Life. So you remember David King from the other gallery. You remember David King from back when I covered his show at uh, Bay Arts, the Time Travelers one. This one, this grouping of You Are Here, it looks to me like soldiers that are elsewhere, not here in the United States. Um, it definitely has a desert feel to it with all the yellow and the outfits, the, um, the uniforms, not outfits. Uh, very powerful, four, four pieces like that. Then we have another Kasumi one, which this one right here is evasion, looking back and forth, evading back and forth. But it's not a video, it's a, one of these, what's it called again? It's a lenticular print which is really pretty amazing. So then we have, okay, I thought, oh, this is an interesting mirror so we can see the gallery better. But it's actually Erica Townsend's You're in a Modern Jean Van Eyck painting. For those of you that remember that 
Jen Van Eyck painting with um, the, uh, the married couple that's about to look married and the girl's pregnant, but she's really not pregnant. She just has a big belly because that was the fashion back then. And they have this round mirror behind them that reflects, I can't remember what it reflects, but that's the, that's the concept there. So you get, to, you get to see me a little bit. Um, then we have over here, this piece is another one by uh, Maximilian Peralta, who did some of those stunningly realistic pieces. And how interesting, the only one that doesn't have a figure in it is salt. See, that's why we still need living figuratively as a show, to convince people to buy figurative art. If there was somebody on that chair, perhaps it would not have sold. I don't know. Um, then we have Julie Friedman's Pie in the Sky. So she does these empty rooms where the, where the animals have taken over. And very cool. Here's another one. And then we have another Kristen Klippel. This is just amazingly stunning. So these multiple flowers... Um, this is the kind of thing where I think she should enter it in the Grand Rapids Art Prize because the Grand Rapids Art Prize happens, I don't know if it's happening right now, it kind of got pushed off with COVID. Um, one of the things that people do with the Grand Rapids Art Prize, there's lots of art where there's a lot of repetition, like somebody sculpted a thousand butterflies and hung them on the ceiling. Somebody put a thousand pennies of all different colors and built a picture of uh, Martin Luther King with them. Um, and then the artist sits there and talks about it and tells everybody over and over and over again the artist's suffering story where the artist had to, you know, hand roll these things. Each one of them was hand colored, hand painted. So to me, this is amazing that she's done this many little flowers. And that she was also the one that had all the, the multiple flowers at the, um, the beginning uh, with the birdhouse. But look how amazing this all is. It is just very cool. This is homemaker. It's a little oven. Little little hammer and little hook. I can't remember what that hook is for, but there's a colonial reason for those hooks to bring pianos up to the second floor. I don't know. All right, let's keep on. We'll keep on moving around. Okay, and we have another couple of Julie Friedman's. These ones are a little bit bigger. And this one, is there an animal? Maybe, the, oh, this one, this one right here has the, the portrait of the dog but maybe the dog is out. But then we've got the, the iceberg. Very cool. All right, we're gonna keep on going around here. We've got Rachel Beamer's collages, deciduous. So then this one has more of a natural, natural feel to it. And this one is Cecily. And maybe it's a portrait of somebody without using their actual image. And this one here is Dominic, possibly also a portrait of somebody without actually showing the somebody's body. Then we've got Kristen Newell's sculpture. This is very, very amazing. It is called, oh, it is called Untitled. Not even a clue, but it is sold. Therefore, it's a wonderful success. That's beautiful. Contemplating maybe where they are right now. So let's go around the corner. Okay, then we have Bernadette Glorioso. This one, I love how she did this face. It is sculptural and chunky and has a little bit of an Egon Schiele feel to it. It has a little bit of a atelier inspired drawing feel to it. So let's see, what have we not seen yet? Um, right here, another Bernadette Glorioso, hearkening back. And then back here we have yawning, not yelling, yawning. And it's Micah Krauss. 
like a million little ink drawings, looks like. And then, or maybe they're, they're drawings on the, um, the Procreate or one of the um, uh, computer things where you draw on your uh, whatever that thing is right here, um, your iPad. And then you, you print them out. Um, so there's that. And then we have this little cool, fun thing where you get to see me again uh, because the whole thing, oh, there I am. Oh, I thought that beep was me getting too close. Erica Townsend's Still Lives. So Erica Townsend was also the one that did the Van Eyck mirror. So she's got this engaging the viewer um, vibe to her. All right, so now I believe we have seen this whole show. I'm just going to show you something cool that I love in these Cleveland State Galleries. Look at these rounded doors. Oh, my God. I don't know if these are the bathrooms or what they are. Oh, this is a, there's a Robert Thurmer, something to do with the door. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to cover that because I have to read that. But uh, Robert Thurmer used to be the gallery director here. Awesome guy. Retired just a couple years ago, but he's still young. He's not like old retired. He's young and smart retired. Um, and I'm not sure what he's doing next, but, but these doors are amazing. And I don't know if he did the doors or made the doors or if he's making a statement about the doors or if the doors open. They open. Oh, look at this. There's a mirror inside the door. And it's got that welcome thing in it. Oh, that's amazing. I'm going to open the other one, see whether it's the same thing. See, when you go to a gallery, people, there's things to find. This, okay, this one's locked, and it's going to be frustrating. So, like, that's the, I don't know, the Schrodinger's, Schrodinger's thing. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to read that. I'm sure it's metaphysical. And even if I read it, I won't be able to understand it or explain it to my lovely viewers. But I will do another thing here. All right. So I sat down. I'm going to sit down here. Before, when we were walking through all these, I told you that I was rejected from the Can Triennial show. Um, the way that they did their uh, call for entry was everybody had to show them some pieces that you've done already and then submit a proposal for pieces you are going to do to solve the inspirational problem of you are here. That was sort of the inspiration words that you're supposed to paint to and be inspired by. Um, so the way that I chose to solve mine was a little bit prophetic because back when I was submitting this, this was like maybe even a year ago, uh, Roe v. Wade had not been overturned yet. Uh, but I did see the handwriting on the wall. You know, as soon as they shoved Amy Cohn Barrett into the Supreme Court at the last minute, um, I saw the handwriting on the wall. So, and I also knew that Ohio was going to trigger their heartbeat law just like that as soon as Roe v. Wade got overturned. So, it, I had painted these ones here, which I know you've seen a million times. I've posted them on my Facebook page. This one is called Trust Women. And this one is called My Body, My Decision. So I submitted those two as inspiration or as like samples of my existing works. And my proposal was that I was going to paint Ohio women lamenting the fact that Roe v. Wade was going to be overturned or had already been overturned, depending on the timing, um, as a really sad, sardonic statement as to where we are here in Ohio, where suddenly, you know, past 49 years, we had the right to decide what to do with our bodies. And now, suddenly, we don't. Now, suddenly, we have lost our reproductive freedom. Um, so, I was, my proposal was not accepted, so I kicked that can down the road. I was working on goddess project stuff and everything like that. And I thought, all right, I'm going to take my sweet time with that second concept of painting Ohio women looking at the Ohio flag. But then Roe v. Wade got overturned. And then I started doing that. So that is what I'm doing right now. This painting, if my concept had been accepted, this painting would have been in the show along with a couple other ones that I'm working on right now. But 
uh, because I wasn't accepted, I didn't have to rush on them. So this one is something that I have also been posting um, bits and pieces of, and she's holding the Ohio flag because sadly, this is where we are right now here in Ohio. And I'm also a little bit sad to see that no, there so far, and maybe there, I haven't gone to every single can try any little thing, but so far nobody has taken on the um, abortion rights issue in their art yet. And I feel like somebody has to, and I'm taking, doing that myself. Um, so don't mean to bug you, you know, as, as uh, Bono said in that song, you know, when he was talking about apartheid. Um, but I'm gonna bug you because this is really, really important and we do not want to go back to the dark ages. So anyway, in the meantime, come check out the Can Triennial stuff. It's only gonna be up through August 31st. So, and grab one of these books when you get a chance because it'll show you where all the other places that you should check out. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, and this will be a drive, I'm heading to the transformer station on the west side. So, you know, I'll probably be an hour before I go live again for Gods uh, of Dust and Rainbows, um, which is the theme of the Front International Show, which is a, another major thing that's happening all across Northeast Ohio, uh, masterminded by Fred Bidwell. So the Can Triennial and the Gods of Dust and Rainbows are kind of going concurrently. And they've, you know, Can Triennial has been feeding off of Gods of Dust and Rainbows because Gods of Dust and Rainbows brings international artists here to Cleveland. Can Triennial spotlights Cleveland artists right here in Cleveland because we have a very thriving, hopping arts community. So um, I'm going to finish up right now and then take a drive over to the west side to the Transformer Station, which is where the front international stuff starts. And I'll uh, go live from there in maybe an hour or so. So go have lunch or whatever. Have your afternoon snack. See you all in a bit. <laughs>